Hello viewers, welcome to this video. When people ask me about my terminal setup, I usually direct them to the video that I did a couple of years ago. In YouTube, if you search for just me terminal setup, you will see this video about my terminal and how I customize it. This video is still relevant. So I used ZSH, oh my Z shells, ZSH auto suggestions, Tmux and Powerline. Although this video is still valid, I wanted to redo this video because I've added a couple more customizations to my terminal. And the operating system that I use is Arch Linux with the i3 as the window manager and if I get bored I switch to Ubuntu 2004 but I won't stick with Ubuntu for a long time and then get back to Arch Linux. Regarding terminal in Arch Linux I use a terminal called Termite and if it's in Ubuntu I'll be using the default GNOME terminal. In this video I'm going to show you how I usually set up my terminal in an Ubuntu 2004 virtual machine. The process is going to be the same if you're using Ubuntu or Arch Linux but in this video let's stick with Ubuntu because I know most of you guys are using Ubuntu. Right the version of Ubuntu that that I'm going to be using in this video is Ubuntu 2004. If I do virtualist, so I've got an Ubuntu virtual machine running on my host machine. So that's a brand new virtual machine running in KVM libvirt environment. And if I do virt viewer Ubuntu, that's my Ubuntu virtual machine. Let's log into it. Cool. Okay, as you can see here, this is a brand new virtual machine. Let me skip that. Next, I don't want to send system info. Next, done. Okay, cool. So let me launch the terminal first and let me do my usual things. Preferences, I'm going to change the font size a little bit bigger so you can see better. Let's set that to 14. Cursor shape, I usually prefer underline colors, show bold text in bright colors, and I'm also going to set the transparency. Okay, so that's better, I think. Scrolling, I don't want to see the scroll bar. Okay, that's good. Right, so this is what you get on a vanilla Ubuntu GNOME terminal, right? So this is bash, and if I do echo dollar shell, so I'm running bash, and if I also do get end password, when get end, so I'm just looking at the password entry for my user, and you can see I'm using the bash shell. So the first step, what I normally use on my terminal, first thing is ZSH. So I prefer to use ZSH terminal. All right, let me close that one. Remind me later. Okay, I use ZSH as my shell and I use oh my Z shell as the plugin manager, which makes my life really easier. You just pick what plugins you need. And then a couple of plugins. One is ZSH auto suggestions. The other one is ZSH syntax highlighting. And for the prompt customization, I use the power level 10K tool. So we're going to see all these in this video. First thing first, I need to install Z shell. Sudo apt update sudo app install z shell type in my sudo password right z shell installed now i need to change my shell there's a command called chsh password type in your password and change the shell to bin z shell okay so that's changed so you need to log out and log back in for the changes for the settings to take effect let me do that close the terminal bar off log out log back in all right, let me open up the terminal. All right, so when you install ZSH and start your shell for the first time, it finds that you don't have a valid .zsh rc file and then it will show you this configuration wizard. So either you can go through this, you can press one and then go through uh, different settings or I usually prefer to go with uh, zero because I basically want an empty ZSH RC and I want to customize everything from scratch. So I'm gonna use zero and if you type in Q, it's going to ask you it's going to bring up this configuration wizard the next time you start your shell so i'm going to press zero here which means if i do cat dot zsh rc there's just one comment in that file it's just an empty file basically and it allows you to configure your zsh or if you want uh, to go with some uh, recommended options then you can use this option too okay so that's the default Z uh, zsh shell it's it's boring than the bash if you look at the prompt here nothing useful nothing meaningful okay the next thing i usually do is install oh my z shell okay so let me go to oh my z shell github oh my z shell oh my z shell and look at for the installation instructions i can use one of these commands to install so depending on whether you've got curl or wget you can use one of these commands you also need to have git install so i think i don't have git by default on ubuntu yeah we don't have git we don't have curl 
wget, we do have wget, so I'm just going to install git. Right, git is installed. Now let's go and copy the command because I've got wget installed. I'm going to copy this and run it here. Right, so oh my Z shell is installed and look at that, the prompt has changed. And if you look in .zshrc file now, so that's the new file and the default theme is Roby Russell theme, which I'm going to change shortly. Right, the next thing I'm going to do is install ZSH auto suggestion plugin. So I'm gonna search in GitHub for ZSH auto suggestions. So this plugin is a valuable plugin. It's a lifesaver plugin for me. This is one plugin which I can't live without in my ZSH environment. So when I'm doing my YouTube videos, I usually test the video before recording the uh, actual video. So when I'm doing the test video, I usually run the commands and everything. And when it comes to recording the actual video, and when I start typing the commands, I get the commands uh, suggested from my history. All right, so ZSH auto suggestions. If we go down here under the installation section, gonna go to install.md. And because we've got all my Z shell installed, it's just this command that we need to run. Okay, copy that command, paste it. It's just uh, cloning the Git repository to your local machine. And finally, what we're gonna do is we need to add ZSH auto suggestions to the list of plugins that ZSH uses. All right, so edit your ZSH RC file, ZS hrc and if you search for plugins yeah plugin at the moment we've got just git plugin loaded and i'm going to add zsh auto suggestions plugin save the file and i'm going to exit and relaunch the terminal okay so now zsh auto suggestion plugin is installed and now when i whenever i start typing something it's going to suggest commands from my history Let's take a look. So I'm just typing G here and you can already see uh, that it's suggesting the command from my history. So that's the, the recent command from my history that starts with G. And if I want to run this command, all I need to do is press the right arrow key and it fills the command for me, okay? And if I do C, I usually type the clear command because that got into my muscle memory. People ask me, why don't you use control L because clear is in my muscle memory. But anyways, if I do history, so those are the things in my history. And if I just start typing VI, if I just type V and it shows the command from my history, let me type something else, some random commands. And if I do that, again, it suggests that from my history. So that's one of my favorite plugin, right? So that's ZSH auto suggestion. The next command, sorry, the next plugin that I'm going to show you or to use is ZSH syntax highlighting. Again, I'm gonna search in GitHub for ZSH syntax highlighting zsh syntax highlighting i'll make sure to put the link to all these repository in the video description if you want it and under how to install section install.md again it's going to be the same command if you're using oh my z shell that one all you need to do is run this git clone command and edit your zsh rc file go to the plugins section and now we're going to add ZSH syntax highlighting. Save the file, close the terminal, reopen it. All right, so syntax highlighting. If I just type a command, let's say echo, and if I do ye say, you see the it's highlighted in red, which means it's not a valid command. And if I do echo, yeah, that's good. That's uh, green because it's a valid command. And if I type something like while true do echo hello, done sleep for five seconds in between so this gives you a nice syntax highlighting feature if i've got something wrong here i would obviously know because the color would be red let's say i delete uh, i made a typo here and you can see here there's something clearly wrong with this command because there is something highlighted in red okay and if i just uh, mistyped echo and you can see here so that's it's really handy at some point but i got used to using this command we've seen zsh installation we've seen oh my zsh plugin manager we've seen zsh auto suggestions zsh syntax highlighting and now the final bit is the power level 10k so that's the prompt customization i'm going to go to again github and search for power level 10k that's the one 
and look at the getting started on my Z shell all I have to do is run this command all right so before running file level 10k because it's going to customize my prompt i need to have some packages font related packages installed on ubuntu and os linux i usually install the font awesome package so if you're on ubuntu just install sudo apt install fonts font awesome and if you're on os linux sudo pacman dash s ttf font awesome okay sudo apt install minus y fonts font awesome enter my sudo password right font awesome is installed now i'm going to copy the git clone command for power level 10k paste it here right so what's next we need to update the plugin section so zsh theme is this one so i'm going to copy the theme name I'm going to open up my ZSH RC and under ZSH theme here, I'm going to replace Robbie Russell with Power Level 10K. All right, and then close the terminal, reopen it. And there you go. The very first time you start your terminal after installing Power Level 10K, it's going to bring up the configuration wizard and it lets you customize how you want your prompt to look like. So it's going to ask you a few questions and it's going to decide what terminal you've got and what fonts you've installed. And dependent on that, it's going to show you some options. Right. Does this look like a diamond? This one? No, it definitely doesn't look like a diamond. It might look like a diamond in your case, depending on the font packages you've installed depending on the distribution that comes with the default certain fonts and things like that but for me clearly it doesn't look like a diamond so i'm going to hit no here does this look like a log yes it does so i'm going to press y here do all these icons fit between the crosses i don't see them fitting between the crosses so no some icons overlap neighboring crosses i'm going to type n here right prompt style I'm interested in classic. Yep, I'm gonna go with classic here. Unicode, um, lightest, and show current time. I don't, I'm not interested in time uh, because I always have time here or somewhere else. I don't want to see the time all the time in my terminal. So I'm gonna say one prompt head, flat or blurred. I'm gonna go with blurred because that looks cool. Do you want blurred on both the end? Yes, I definitely need. No, I don't want to go with. So I want to go with the flat option. One line or two lines. I want to go with two line. Disconnected, dotted, and solid prompt connection. So I'm just going to go with one prompt frame. I want frame only on the left side. So I'm going to go with two. Prompt spacing, two sparse, few icons or many icons. If you like, you can go with many icons, but I like minimalist approach. So I'm going to go with few icons concise or fluent so i'm going to go with fluent here enable transient prompt um yes instant prompt mode to quiet apply changes so now it's the time so that when you press y it's going to apply all the changes that you've done here into the configuration file dot zshrc so i'm going to press y there we go so that's our prompt and if i go to the downloads directory you can see i'm going into the downloads directory that looks cool and on the right here you see the exit code and if i type in some random commands you see the exit code there 127 it looks cool and what else okay so the other feature is if you go into a github repository for example let me clone my github repository git clone https github.com just me and open source dot files so i've got a repository called dot files which i'm gonna use in a minute because uh, the next thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna install tmux and i've got the tmux configuration file stored in this repository right so if i go into dot files now because that's a github repository and you can see here i'm on a github repository and it shows that i'm in the main branch and if i do git checkout dash b dev now i'm on the dev branch and things like that okay git checkout make back in the main branch and uh, you basically get an idea so i like this power level 10k font um okay the next thing is i'm going to install tmux sudo apt install tmux sudo password right tmux installed and i'm going to copy my tmux configuration file so in my dot files repository if you do an ls minus la so that's this tmux.conf file you take a look at tmux.conf file i've got my custom bindings f2 to create new window f3 previous window f4 next window f10 
to synchronize the pin, which is a useful feature that I use. Okay, I'm going to copy .dmux.conf to under my home directory and if I just type in tmux, I've got tmux now. Alright, so if I want to split the pin horizontally or if I want to split the pin vertically, it's F5. And if I want to split it horizontally, it's F6. And now we've got three pins here. And uh, most often, if I want to run commands on multiple machines at the same time, this is a lifesaver. I've got an option to synchronize the pin so that when I type in one pin, it gets replicated on all the other pins. So the shortcut is F10 and it won't work in GNOME Terminal because the F10 is assigned to a different uh, shortcut. Right, so if I go to Preferences, go to Global, sorry, General, enable the Menu Accelerator key F10 by default. I'm going to disable that because I've got F10 bound to synchronize pane shortcut in my Dmux configuration. So now if I press F10, so my pains are now synchronized, right? So if I just type in one pen now, and you can see that it's typed everywhere. And if I type F10, if I press F10 again, it's going to stop the synchronization and I can just run the command on one terminal. All right, cool. I think that's all I wanted to show you in this video. So anyone asking me about the terminal setup, now I've got a latest video that explains how exactly my terminal is set up. It's primarily ZSH, oh my ZSH as the plugin manager, ZSH auto suggestions, the one plugin that I can't live without, ZSH syntax highlighting, power level 10K and a Tmax with a simple configuration. That's it. All right, cool. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please share it with your friends and I will see you all in my next video. Bye-bye.